hi uh, my name is narendra ghate uh, i am a designer from idc our professor professor natkan is here so we are very honored to be here um, and i have passed out 97 so last 20 years i have been in uh, tata elexi i am leading the design studio there and uh, we are doing multiple projects uh, right from ux and in ai which we some uh, some things that we'll talk today to transportation service design product design all of that so uh, it's a fun place to be and i hope we have a good discussion today thank you uh, raghavan uh, director of products at adobe i've been in the uh, software industry for longer than that <laughs> uh, if i'm sure some of you may go all the way back to the days of fireworks when that was a cool tool to use so i managed that and after that it's been fun with uh, muse and dreamweaver and now into the more uh, modern world of uh, xd which is a new tool that we have introduced i'm really looking forward to how you know the other panelists and all of you feel about uh, you know changes in ux and how we as a tooling and solution provider can uh, meet your needs uh, i've already had an introduction and pardon me I, as you can hear i'm quite sick uh, and you may be getting sick of me because I've been on stage twice now so far. Um, but I do work at IBM Design, helping clients uh, take advantage of emerging tech. Uh, and the keynote I gave yesterday and the workshop were both about a new book uh, that I've written about an emerging tech that I'm super interested in. Yep. Awesome. OK, let's start with this question about why emerging technologies are the next frontier for UX. What kind of roles and opportunities UX designers can play in this field? We can start. Oh, me, I can start. Um, I am a, s a super proponent of designers leading the charge into emerging tech, um, largely because we should do what we always do, which is bring that human centeredness to it. Uh, the prior talk was actually all about that. Um, and I believe that's like, if we just let the tech go uh, without a user centeredness to it, uh, disaster will follow. I think what's world without changes? You know, the world is changing whether we like it or not. And it's, I think, up to this group here to humanize it. I think that's what uh, the real value of, uh, you know, UX is to make the technology or the other advances be more, uh, you know, value add to the general co population rather than, you know, just to uh, minority. So that's how I see it. So Javde heads uh, the Society General. Uh, on emerging technologies. So can you give a quick intro? Hi, I'm uh, Javardhan Sambedu. I'm a part of SockChain's Emerging uh, Technologies and Trends division. So we focus on uh, technologies that will come mainstream five to 10 years for the bank. Uh, we focus on blockchain, uh, machine learning, deep learning, IoT, and augmented reality. There is a common sentiment in the industry that emerging technologies can be both boon and bane for consumers. So Chris, uh, what do you think about the positive of emerging tech? Since I have the mic, maybe I should answer. Maybe you should continue. Yeah. Sorry. See, if you, uh, it's a slightly long-winded answer, so please uh, bear with it. Uh, uh, if you see what's happening uh, till almost five years, from industrial revolution till about five years ago, uh, what was happening was that the designers or the, the people, for example, were not actually fully utilizing the technology in the product. So, for example, uh, you had to be trained to use the product better. Now, five years and next five years as AI comes in, what's going to happen is that the technology can do far more than what people really, uh, sorry, it's the other way around. People expect far more than what the technology can really offer. Uh, and I'll just give you some, uh, an actual incident that happened today morning. And uh, Alexa has been, or uh, Amazon Echo, has been <laughs> introduced in India just now. And I got mine yesterday and I, uh, introduced it today. I mean, I sort of uh, installed it today in my house. And I was very happy because, uh, you know, it was doing a fair bit of complicated things like follow-up questions and stuff like that. And uh, I was thrilled. I told my wife, see, it's working. My wife asked her is a question, so today what's the traffic like on the way to Whitefield? It couldn't answer because the Google Maps is yet not integrated in Alexa. So she's saying, it's shit, it doesn't work. The point is, the people expect far more very quickly because of these buzzwords like AI and smart technology and things like that. And then when it does not perform, you really feel that the product is not up to the mark, the brand is up to the mark, not up to the mark. And for the next five years, I think the role of UX designers would be to how to humanize, almost the other way around, how to 
make people understand technology better so that they don't expect or they don't let their expectations run away and they think these products are magic and let the products mature. And this is happening everywhere, whether it's smart cars or your uh, smart chatbots. And that's where I feel UX people will have a large role to play to just make this gap that is widening between users and product, uh, you know, come closer again. I mean, I do have a point of view, you know, uh, when you talk about anything that is emerging, it is disruptive by its very nature. And anything that is disruptive can be scary. You know, you may not really, uh, you know, you can be on either of the sides. You could be benefiting from that disruption or, you know, you could be made redundant because of your current skill set or the role that you have. I guess, you know, it's all about how do you react, how do you make the most of it to even convert a potential, uh, you know, bane into a positive movement for you. So that's how I see it. I, th I think I feel quite, quite similarly. Um, we have a lot of problems that we're facing in the world, and they are massive and they are global. Um, and unfortunately, the way that cultural attention works, it would be difficult to use old tools to try and solve those problems. Um, emerging tech gives us both the opportunity to rethink the problems, how we address those problems, and just because of the nature that it is emerging, people will pay attention. And if we can design them right, we can really use those to tackle some of the global problems that we have. So I know I'm a bright green optimist, um, but every time I think or look at a new emerging technology, that's my first take on it. Well, how can we use this given the massive problems that we've got? All right. So Jaya, what are the promises and challenges you look for from uh, emerging tech? OK, uh, specifically, each of the technology that we are tracking, I mean, we look at it from what are the industry trends and identify some of them which we think has mas maximum impact. For example, one of the things that we've been pioneering is from last two to two and a half years, we've been looking at blockchain and the kind of disruption that it can bring. Because specifically, instead of waiting for other companies to disrupt us, as a bank, we ourselves are disrupting. You know, as a lab, I have absolute autonomy on the kind of uh, products that I can choose, which business line of our group I want to go for, and we start exploring with this. And in many cases, you can clearly see, because we're doing this, the only one who's going to be majorly affected is us. But instead of being worried about it, we look at this as an opportunity, that we can invent a new kind of a product which does not exist in the market today. And that's, how, that's the kind of uh, mind you know, we, it's more of a mindset than anything else. And that's where I think emerging technologies helping us have this conversation. And it's the same. In, in fact, unlike any other technology, I mean, we work with uh, IoT, as I said, augmented machine learning. But blockchain has been the only place where we've ended up collaborating with our competitors. That's never happened uh, until now. And the number one bank in the world in commodities is, tr is working with us. We are the number second in the world in that. And this has never happened in the history because we never see eye to eye on topics of collaboration, let alone on technology. But in blockchain, we've realized if you collaborate, both of you gain, I mean, have a chance to win. So that's the kind of uh, disruption what we're seeing, which we've never seen something before. Right, great, Raghavan. So you guys are really, really like groundbreaking products you are making. You are disrupting yourself by creating brand new products, future projects, and especially most of your products are targeted for designers and uh, the developers, animators, and whatnot. So, uh, what are the promises and challenges you look at from this emerging tech perspective, building products from Adobe perspective? The base of changes, the pace of disruption, innovation has just, you know, I think significantly increased from the days of, you know, if you look at uh, Photoshop, what was changing from a core value that it was providing? Not much. There were obviously innovations in that, but from a design perspective, there was not much happening, you know, 10, 15, 20 years time frame. But then I think in just the last three, four, five years, with, I think, the value of UX becoming so critical, the design world has totally transformed itself. You know, last year's technology is no longer the hottest or the coolest. It, the innovations are at like almost on a, a daily, monthly, weekly pace where, you know, it's hard for a tooling and a solution provider for us to think about like what could be coming, you know, forget about today's problems. You have to build solutions that would be value add for the next generation. That's tough, but that's fun because 
instead of just solving uh, the same thing over and over and making some incremental changes, now we are truly looking at IoT or you know uh, machine learning and how do you really bring that in and add value? It's not easy, but I guess you know that's what is keeping uh, the team really excited about it. Yeah, as you rightly said, like you know this technology is actually moving very rapidly. So in this fast phased uh, technology upgradation today. How designers can upgrade their skills? Do you think uh, our designers need to learn code? Or what breed of designers is industry looking for? I'm, I'm sure you know, we'll have a good discussion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am a strong believer that uh, designers need to understand uh, beyond just pure uh, visual aesthetics and into the technology from a code perspective. And just take the example of uh, such a mundane thing, you know, compared to IoT or uh, more esoteric things, uh, such a simple thing as website design, right? I'm sure all of you at some stage have done that or continuing to do that. If you are designing the experience for a website and if you don't know the technology behind it, which framework or which, uh, you know, uh, framework is going to be used by the developer, I don't think you're going to succeed. If you, empathy for the end user is one, but if you cannot, collaborate and work closely with the developer to whom you are handing off the design, it's a, I think it's very inefficient. I've seen that happen so many times and I just really feel that if the designer can not actually code, but if you can at least relate to it and can understand it, that's significant. I think the days of somebody who was just purely drawing boxes and thinking his job is done, I think that's just not how I see it. So Narendra, your perspective, um, we'll, you're leading more than 100 designers and basically you're working on uh, from autonomous car to a lot of projects. Yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm going to be frank and harsh and we can have a fight, <laughs> but uh, I'm very clear in my mind that uh, designers should not code and I'll try and defend it. 10 years ago, maybe. Now, when AI is going so rapid, you draw these boxes, put them colors, you press a button and the code will get ready. Automatic generation of code is already here, right? So the, what's happening is that technology is getting so advanced and it is so complicated that you really need to be deep into it to really be do, able to do anything with it. I mean, we heard Saurabh's uh, talk in the morning. I mean, if you want to create personalities and actually give those kind of uh, uh, you know, algorithms into that code, you really need to be very good at it. And you cannot be both ways where you're also doing a bit of design and a bit of coding. The other thing that is uh, happening is, like I said in my earlier uh, remark, the gap between what people expect uh, from the technology and what the technology can do, the gap between what they think they understand of the technology and what the technology can do has increased vastly. People now, when you open your car bonnet, you really do not know what's happening inside. So the designers actually have to help the technology and the engineers so that the product can be made more usable and friendly. It means much more harder work on the coding side so that you reduce the load of trying to uh, sort of what the end consumer is supposed to do. And my opinion is that technology is getting so complex that you cannot uh, have both the hats at the same time. Okay, what about you, Jay? No, definitely, I think a certain degree of understanding the process is absolutely critical uh, for the engineer. Uh, they may not really need to know the nitty gritties of how to code, configure, and things like that. But what we've seen, uh, for example, the biggest problem what we had when we were building a commodity trading platform was not how the screens would look, but frankly, how the user was looking at naming a port. You know, the, the port name was called Vladivostok, but in Russian, it starts with a W. And with English, it starts with a V. The bigger problems we had from the design elements were things like that, because the designer did not get into the mindset of what, who they were designing it for. But I agree, we don't really need to get down to the nitty gritties of the code, but definitely a very, very strong association with the tech team and understand what they're trying to solve will really help in bringing out an overall better experience to the end customer. That's where. Yeah. Chris, okay, you want I? to add? <laughs> Please go. No. No, I'm just saying that um, understanding has to be both ways. So even now, after so many years, I am 
half the time evangelizing and training or educating my customers and that in terms of what is design. So design is not aesthetics. Design is not uh, you know, so showing how the colors would work. The fact that a certain thing has to be worked in a certain way is where design really comes in because that's what the solution creating is happening. And because designs are, designers are not constrained by the technology difficulties that are there behind it, they can really imagine a solution that is really the ideal solution. And then we can figure out how to really get to that and what is possible in stage one and stage five. So I feel designers can actually think of a complete solution uh, and uh, partly also they have to keep, uh, but I agree with you, they need to understand at least what's happening behind the scenes. They cannot be completely <laughs> oblivious to that. Um, I, I, I'm probably more on this side of the stage than that side of the stage. Um, uh, yeah, oh yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Um, I mean, I wouldn't trust an architect who had never applied a nail to a, a board, right? Some familiarity with the medium is critical to knowing what it can do uh, so that you don't paint a picture that is absolutely unattainable. Um, at IBM Design, the designers end up uh, acting as facilitators between uh, business and uh, user advocacy, which we do, uh, and development. Um, and knowing just a bit of code, not, not how to launch an enterprise application, uh, but just a bit of code and the vocabulary and the concerns of developers means that that conversation is easier, means that that facilitation is possible. So I would not advise designers to become coders but yes, get familiar with the medium. Yeah, that, that I, they need yeah. to know okay. what's happening. Great. So, so let me ask you this question, basically. The world is moving towards automation, right? So there is a lot of uh, buzz in the industry, like you know, a lot of jobs get replaced. So is it same for the designers too? Do you think designers' jobs get replaced by AI and robots in the future, Jia? I think uh, the role of the designer becomes all the more critical today than ever before. Because today, we are moving more and more into a world where algorithms are dictating things about how you would buy things to where you would be getting your cab to a whole lot more. But if we don't humanize these elements properly, and keep the customer in the center of what you're trying to do. Because at one point, I remember uh, there was a study where uh, you know, if your battery uh, of your phone was dying to about 1% or 2%, and at that point where Uber was applying a surcharge, they used to check that element that your battery was running out of 2% and automatically placed a surcharge because there was no way you could go back and ask for another, another part. Now, if you keep allowing algorithms to find the most optimal one, they will do what you ask it to do. If you ask it to bring it more profitability, that is what the algorithms will go out to design. And today, as designers, we have a lot more bigger responsibility because you need to humanize this whole thing. Is it ultimately only about increasing the revenue for you? Or is there a more larger impact that we as an enterprise should do? Because you can even help that person out with that lesser battery without applying that surcharge because you don't really have to do that. That's where I see the role of designers becoming more pertinent today than ever. And it's not about the worry about will they take away jobs. We need to completely turn the question around to see what are the additional elements, what are we, do, who are we designing this for is more relevant and that's uh, my take on this. <laughs> but yes, I totally agree with him and um, see, I'll, I'll give you uh, an example of uh, what I think is going to happen, especially for UX or designers careers going forward or what they're expected to do. Uh, the core humanity of understanding humans, understanding the subtleties is something that AI will need to learn from people like us who tell them that this is what people expect and hence you have to repeat that. And I'll give you an example which is almost impossible for an AI to understand uh, right away. So how many of you all, for example, listen to music while sleeping? Some of you, right? Have you all noticed that uh, when you turn off the lights, the music seems louder and clearer? It's a pure perception of the human person that the, suddenly the sound seems better because the lights are off. There is no way an AI can understand that. And there are many, many, many such small, small perceptible nuances of humans that makes us humans. And it's only us designers going back to the core ethnography and core understanding of people is where we will be able to understand it, quantify it, maybe it'll make it into a platform and translate it so that some of the AI systems can then start appearing more and more human. So it's going to be our job to make this AI system more and more human by being core to understanding what people are. 
let me look at it from the point of automation because again like i said before you know automation is inevitable it's already happening and uh, something a lot of you would have done or would have seen done in your uh, world which is redlining a design right how much time and effort has gone into doing something that probably every single designer hates doing but everybody had to do it now there are tools which have totally automated that so you don't need to really spend the precious time of a designer wasting time doing redlining and handing it off to be put into production just imagine that you know at like significant additional levels where it's just inevitable that more and more parts of things that a computer can easily do whether with ai or other deep learning capabilities is secondary but the key is automation is going to just move up the chain till how long and how much will be taken over i think is secondary all i will say is for this audience just keep in mind that things that can be automated will be automated it's just a matter of time so just always move up the chain reskill yourself and make sure that you can think about how to stay a step ahead of that game chris i'm going to tell a scary story um i worked with a client uh who had uh developed a system that broke online advertisements down to their atomic elements um and then built uh what we would call a narrow ai nowadays uh such that it simply did ab testing across every single place and every person that it delivered that ad to um so it would try a picture of a puppy with helvetica and the color red with a mother of the age of 35 in des moines and see if she clicked on the ad it would try the color blue and times with a financial advisor in uh, new york city and see if he clicked on that ad and it would slowly get better and better as following what the results were right which in this case was simply clicking on the ad so over time um the ai was doing the design of these online ads now the kicker that was 10 years ago um i think as a designer your job is uh well your future will partially depend on what it is you sell if you sell that you are pixel pushing your job is not long for this world If you are a strategist, if you are a user advocate and a systems thinker, you're fine for the 3 to 5 years that we've been talking about. Yeah. So, how you sell yourself and what you do, what you think you do is going to be really important. So, Narendra, question to you. So, what is one suggestion you can give to the UX India audience uh to stay relevant and transform their skills? i sort of uh, partly answered that uh, what i feel um, is happening with uh, lots and lots of technology including uh, adobe products that are getting easier and easier to use that uh, people tend to use products and create beautiful things and feel that that is the design and they are missing the core thinking and the core skills of obs- observation of empathy of uh, deep thinking that is um, was done much more earlier when these tools were not that easy because you tended to sort of finalize your design in your head before you start you know turning on your computer now it is like you're designing on the computer uh, this thing of being able to be true to yourself in terms of how you think and how you design and how you are able to relate to and observe things around all of that is something that will really help you in the future because those are the ones that Uh, can be applied to any new tool that will keep coming i'm sure he's working on the next version which will be easier and faster and will have to half a job anyway so this <laughs> so so this thing of uh, you know knowing that as a designer your ability to think creatively ability to think holistically uh, if you're able to uh, sharpen that and like uh, he said to be able to present it in your own self and for the world in terms of how you pro- what you are that will really help you I think it's all about storytelling you know whatever technology comes whether it is ai or something else right your customers are always going to be humans and they want to be treated like human beings so i don't think that will ever go away and that is what this uh, group has to look at you know you are dealing with real customers real people you know and as long as we you know provide a very 
a personalized uh, solution that treats your end users as people, I think things are going to be fine. Chris? Uh, at IBM Design, we talk a lot about the loop, um, which is about making uh, and testing and reflecting. Um, and honestly, I would give that as advice to individuals as well. Um, to communicate, uh, sorry, to participate in communities of practice, to make, whether that is storytelling through videos or speculative designs, or whether that's actually picking up uh, a uh, Bluemix account and trying out one of the 15 Watson APIs. But in making is where you'll learn, in participating in communities of practice is where you'll get feedback. Uh, and of course, making a habit of just coming to conferences and reading every single day to be familiar with what's in the zeitgeist. Yeah, I think uh, uh, that is true. In, in many cases, we are told uh, when you're designing something, get into someone's shoes. But one thing people don't tell us is if you have to truly get into someone's shoes, you need to leave your shoes out first. Because we try to get into someone's shoes with our shoes on, and that is the way we try to empathize with people. If you truly want to build a product, you really need to get into someone else's shoes and build it for them. For that, you also need to keep a tab on what are the things that are coming up in the market, because that can there is no limit to how free you could be when you're designing something. But you also need to know what is come available out there. So keep yourself abreast of what are the latest things that are happening. But truly, if you need to empathize, leave your shoes before you get into someone else's. Cool, great. I think like it also, I have learned a lot of stuff with the great panel here. So one th uh, as designers, fellow designers, we have to remember that, you know, so emerging technologies keep emerging, emerging all the time, right? So we should be a little uh, <coughs> frontier and actually start learning technologies. We, uh, designers, as panelists said, we don't need to code as a designers do, but we should understand what's coming up so that like you can understand in terms of what technology offers and what is the experience we can create, right? Our, our design fundamentals are still same. So whatever technology is coming, we are building on the top of it, or uh, looking at the empathy perspective, from the experience perspective, and at the end of the day, design is all about problem solving. So we are there are tons of problems to solve, and we are all we are solving. And technology actually helping us to take the momentum up, right? So, uh, so, <coughs> and because this uh, there is a lot of disruption happening in the industry, and we should proactively start learning. So as uh, Chris said. Keep reading a lot of stuff, look, go to conferences, and maybe like, you know, talk to developers. Like, you know, if you keep to talking to developers, you will understand the terminologies or like you know, the problems what they are facing, and we can provide a design a better solution from a user perspective. And I hope you all learned along with me. And I would like to thank you all the panelists for a big give a big uh, round of applause for all these great panelists. Thank you so much, sir. Can we have a group picture?